Welcome to Papa Kilo's 135th scale. This is part one of the French Battle Tank B1 Biz from Tamiya. Sorry I have not posted anything in a while. I have been battling for the past couple of weeks a bacteria infection that I've gotten over um, a couple weeks ago or a week or two ago. And then family came down for Memorial Day weekend as well as going to uh, Scale Fest um, yesterday with uh, Tactical Tacalope as well as um, Ian from that 135th uh, scale show. So here we are. Um, I've completed the build portion of the B1 Biz. Um, let's go ahead and take a closer look of what I've done to this build. So here we are. The build portion of it. I say it was actually rather pretty simple build. Wasn't that all that difficult? I did not have too many issues or problems with it. Um, if you look at the underneath portion of it, the wheels, I left it um, articulating. It rolls, so because um, it's not very tight fit, so they do move back and forth a little bit. So when I want to put on a track. I didn't want to glue down the wheels because I might be a little cockeyed and weird. So I just left it free rolling. It was a little hard trying to add this to the um, the lower hole, but it wasn't actually that bad. But we'll see. So as we look at the front portion of it, I did a lot of um, seam filling here, um, a lot of puttying. I added the the metal barrels. This one was was pretty easy, even though I had to do um, some surgery, and I wasn't expecting to do surgery on this uh, the turret main gun. It it was actually not made for this kit at all. I don't know why it said for Tamiya, but I had to do um, some surgery on the inside in order for it to just to stay still and not move. I also added um, a little detail. As you can see here, let me put it in closer. You can see these holes. I drilled out six holes. Those are supposed to be where you put the barrel cover over. And the holes are for the bolts that they just tied down and, and place it over for transport or when it's not in service. Um, I did forget, and Tamiya did not even have this in their, their instruction, but it's supposed to be there. But you're supposed to cut out um, these triangles here, or excuse me, rectangle here and here. Um, I, they do have underneath um, the areas of where you're supposed to cut out and sand it and make it smooth. I believe it's supposed to be um, a mud catch guard or something. I'm not positive. But I totally goof and totally forgot to cut them out. But anyways, if you actually put on the tracks itself, you're not going to see it anyway. So, I'm not really all that, you know, bummed out about it. But I do kick myself for, you know, just not knowing that I forgot to cut it open there were a little gaps here that I had to put a lot of putty in and fill filling as well on the underneath side as well and it has some gaps I need to do some more filling I had problems with this side here a little bit um, this portion here was warped so it took me a, um, a while to try to get as straight as I can to fit with this upper portion Um, on this section here, I added some wiring, and I had to do a little surgery to make it look like um, the cradle for the antenna wire. So, this piece here is actually um, a solid piece of plastic, and I took a pin vise and drew out the holes here in the middle and here as well. And then I took my hobby knife and then I shave it out to the bottom and make it um, a rectangular square here and here. I got a little carried away so I'm going to have to put a little damage here 
Um, I guess I'm not, you know, all that great with the hobby knife. I guess I'm just too rough. Also, here, I don't know if you, you guys can see it. I'm going to move it in closer here. I've added this dome that's put, that is supposed to be there that the antenna wire is supposed to go through in there. I did not see any of the reference photos because it's very hard to see, so I just guessed. I used um, I used an old dragon headlight and then shaved it out to a dome and fit that piece in there. And I took a pin vise, drill it through, and then and then I kind of guide the and the antenna wire through that hole. I did not glue down this um, antenna structure because that is supposed to be a different color, so. I just left it off for easier painting and then once I get done with it I'm just going to stick it through there. The rear portion was not that hard either. I had to do some filling of course with the seams on the underneath carriage and as well as I'm going to have to go through and fill in these gaps here. It, it did not fill the, the holes as it's supposed to because it's, it's a little short. So, like I said, I'm going to have to fill this section here. But I'm not all that concerned about it because the actual chain itself will actually cover most of it. So you won't be able to see it. The only thing that I can say that I did not like about this kit is the toe shackles here. Reason being, to me, uh, in order to put this chain through there, this is one whole solid piece. So... They instruct you to to cut in between here and here and then clip on the chain like so and hope to God that you didn't not too rough with it where you just break it. So that's what I'm worried about. Um, I'm hoping that it will go through there. The chain supposedly will cover up the actual um, the slits. In hindsight, I would have just made it um, three pieces, the tote, shackle, the mount itself, and then the, the, the bolt that goes through there. To me, that would have been a lot simpler, but uh, what do I know? Uh, what else? Yeah, I mean, other than that, it was a actually pretty simple kit. I do see some... Now, when I got better light, I, some seam lines I'm going to have to sand out, such as here. I'm going to have to sand that out a little bit more, and I'm going to have to do a little bit more work on the hatches, because there's actually a two-piece that you combine together, and I thought I got rid of it, but uh, I, I could still see it a little bit. So, I would I will have to sand that down before I will prime it. Other than that, um, I didn't have no um, issues with this kit. It's, like I said, it's very simple to build. Uh, no problems at all. I did, I'm did. i actually having fun with this kit. The tracks are also complete. Um, I, unfortunately, I had to sand down each of these little um, points here because they actually was a little rough. I guess that's where the attachment point was to the sprue that, that it had. But other than that, um, it's very fast and simple. Um, it's actually sturdy as well. So I'm actually looking forward to putting this on. I'm hoping that this won't get me into trouble. The the Ming, um, what is it, C1 um, Charles actually had a tough time with the tread because the actual pins in it are actually soft. It breaks really easy if you tug too hard on it. So, it's actually, I actually enjoyed it, so I'm not going to go after the, the metal um, tracks this time, so I'm, I'm actually for once sticking with the, the kit track. So, where do we go from here um, after this? Um, this week, I am going to prime it and then paint on the base coat as well as the camo. I'm hoping to be done with that portion of it by this weekend and I'll send you another update 
um, once I completed that part of it uh, prior to uh, futuring it and then decaling it. So, um, and if you guys have any, any questions or comments, please uh, leave it in the comment section below. Um, I hope that you guys have a rest of the um, good week and build on, my friends.